Warning, the following podcast may occasionally contain strong language and material that is not suitable for all ages. If you are easily offended, it is highly advised that you turn back now. However, if you're a degenerate, welcome, brethren. You've found your home. Welcome to the Crime Diner. Here, we feast on food, drinks, True crime, cults, mysteries, and a charcuterie board of weird shit. We do this within a Dinner with Friends theme. I'm Nidia. I'm Dana. I'm Cindy. This is about to get chatty. We're about to get our chat on. We're friends. We haven't seen each other all week. We're getting together for dinner. We're going to tell each other a horrible fucking story. And if you don't like any of that shit, I suggest you refer to the timestamps and skip Directly to the story. Do not pass go. Do not collect two hundred dollars. That's right. It's you're missing. You're missing out. You honestly. are missing out. I've I've had some feedback. Have you? And people are appalled that someone is using the timestamps. I mean, but if that's for you, hey, this is a judgment free zone. If you want to disappoint people, <laughs> it is a judgment free zone. <laughs> Full of judgment. <laughs> if you want to use the timestamps, it's your loss. Hey, listen. Sorry I, about it. I can't tie your hands on this. <laughs> That's right. But let me just tell you what you're missing out on. Because last week on the Crime Diner, on this very podcast, I told you about the High Priestess of Blood, Magdalena Solis, and her cult. She was a ruthless killer who was quite literally a man eater. Oh, yuck. Yeah. I yeah, I was really interested in that story last week. And as I was eating my leftover Tell me you weren't eating liver. No, no, no. Ew, no. Never. No, I was eating my uh margarita cheese cake or cake or whatever Cindy made last oh, week. Yes. When I was eating that on the couch a couple days later, I was thinking about your bloody murderous deity. Was she though? I like to think that I'm a god. <laughs> oh well. Oh no, no, no. Oh, Remember baby. I'm the goddess because yes. I I'm fully planning on creating a church about me. Oh. Oh. I didn't know this. Wait. I want the tax-free options. (laughs) Oh, that's right. Wait, what? (laughs) She wants Uh, tax-free status. Um, That's a cult, babe. Yeah. It's not a cult. Remember, if I need the tax-free status, it cannot be a cult. It's a church. Take I'm, me to church. I'm feeling like somebody's coming in on my turf and I'm <laughs> cracking my neck. Because ever since I was a wee little one, I've been wanting a cult. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. There needs to be the cult leader that leads you to the God. It ain't neither I am the goddess <laughs> that works. Oh, okay. A, 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 so we worship you. Exactly. This but sounds I'm, like a cult of one. I feed y'all. But I'm the what leader. What y'all need. I'm still the leader. As long as I'm still the leader. I'm not coming to this cult. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, see, this is the kind of shit you can be missing out on. That's if you right. Go to the <laughs> so today, I'm going to tell you what Nazi soldiers on the Russian front feared more than anything during World War II. It started with the soft whooshing of the wind off the struts of a poorly rigged biplane bomber. It was an eerie sound. A sound that made them think of a witch's broom. The gliding may have been quiet, but it brought nothing but destruction. This episode, I'm going to tell you about the Noctekin, the Night Witches. I want to be a Noctekin. You you do want to be I one. I am a Night Witch, though. You, you do want to be one. They're the, the, you're going to love this story. I'm oh so excited God. to tell you. Let me just tell you, the Noctekin, <laughs> yeah. that... It, it made my it made my hair stand up. It should because these are some bad bitches. They're women. Yes. Stop. Yes. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Let's eat real quick. Yeah. Let's go. So we're gonna tell you that story, but first the food. Let us pray. Bless us, O patrons, for these thy gifts which we are about to receive from thy donations through Patreon every month under the power of the podcast. podcast cult. What do we have here? <gasps> Ooh. Wait a minute. That smells like. That smells really spicy. Does it? Well, like, it has smells flavor. Like, yeah, flavorful. Yeah, it smells flavorful. Is there like a huge clove of garlic just like roasted it is in the a corner? a whole head of garlic oh, that shit. was cooked into it. Yeah. Where the fuck is it? Over there. Holy shit, that's a whole head of garlic. So what do we have happening here? This is called, it's a one-pot meal mm-hmm. from Russia. It's called uh, plov. 
P L O V. Mm. It can be made with lamb, beef, or any other meat. This time I decided to do chicken, keep it a little lighter. The recipe came from Aliana's Cooking. She is Ukrainian, but the recipes that she uses are from her Russian and Ukrainian family. Mm. So both dessert and dinner come from her. Amazing. Tonight. Let me just say that this is the nicest your voice has ever sounded. <laughs> Apparently, I need to be she needs a very huge toasty. Shot of tequila. I mean, <laughs> sounds sweet and pleasant. That's working for me. <laughs> this smells so fantastic. It really freaking does. Yeah. Oh my god. Is it rice? It's jasmine rice. <gasps> okay. She had me at jasmine. I see like little shreds of like carrots or something. Carrots, julienne carrots. What's the? Is there chickpeas or mushrooms or what is that? No, no. What's it's this right chicken. here? Chicken. Just chicken? It's just chicken. Mm, okay. Some brown chicken? <laughs> I, <laughs> it's dark meat, bitch. <laughs> yes, it is the dark meat. I use skinless, boneless thighs mm. because they tend to have a little bit more fat yeah, on them, do. and thus they don't become as dry you as love boneless. love a fatty thigh. I... <laughs> I don't well I love a fatty thigh but not as much as Dana clearly she just loves to eat that thigh <laughs> plov 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 I dig it I it's very fulfilling like, you know, it's fulfilling. I mean, it's like it fills you up. Filling. It's filling. It's filling. And it's fulfilling. When you have a whole head of roasted garlic, that is I mean, fulfilling of my soul. Every time, without fail. The acid reflux would disagree with you. I mean, garlic doesn't do that to me. Some things do, but garlic doesn't do that to me. Garlic gives me a little bit of acid reflux, yeah. but I tamp it all down like my feelings. When I was a little kid, my mom used to say, green peppers repeat on me. And I was like, that's a weird thing. To <laughs> repeat you on you? I didn't never yes, heard that do. before. And then like now as an adult, they do. They repeat on you. And I was like, I don't like that. No. And I really wish they wouldn't do that because I love green peppers. I don't like them two hours later when I'm like, mm, yeah. <laughs> I just yeah. had green peppers again. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, once you reach a certain age, I, I like to call it the middle age. I think it's fucking rude that you keep saying that. I think it's rude that you send me TikToks about being middle-aged. I think the whole thing is fucking ignorant, and I've had my fill of it. Well, she's been fully attacking us with violence with the middle age thing, and that, for weeks. that TikTok was just hostile that you sent us. It's rude. I sent them a TikTok that said that most people die between 70 and 75, or 80. Yeah. And so 35 to... 45. 45 is middle age. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was rude. And I, I think you're a rude person. You should check your privilege at the door, bitch. <laughs> I've had my fill of it, if I'm honest. So now, now I'm, I'm making an educated guess. Dana is lactose intolerant right now. <laughs> she... <laughs> <laughs> That's that's about right. Yeah. Um, peppers repeat on her. They do, yeah. And onions give her the onions. Don't bother me either. Really? I know they bother you, but they don't bother Girl. me. Yeah. I love onions. I love garlic. That stuff doesn't bother me. If I it eat... is cream cream based thing to <laughs> sort of and green peppers for some odd reason. If I eat onions, I'm gonna be farting for at least three days. <laughs> That's terrible. No, I will tell you this. This morning, I start. I got to work this morning. My first guest was okay. a hundred minute service, and I, Dana two, is a massage therapist. I had two services with her, so it was it was going to be a hundred minutes. I had her in the room, which is that's a long service. A long Hell time. yeah! And she was an older lady. She said she was seventy six years old, and she was like, "I just like to let my massage therapist know that for whatever reason, massage makes me gassy." And I was like, "I'm I'm sorry." <laughs> Uh, okay and like for me you know i have an aversion to gas and people with gas i don't like it and but i have to be professional and be nice so i was like it's fine it's no big deal Me meanwhile i'm seething from the inside like bitch if you think you're gonna come in here and fart on my fucking table we're gonna i'm gonna fight a 75 year old i'm gonna do it i'm a fighter <laughs> Um, she didn't fart though, thankfully, because they I were really been, well, I didn't smell them. I did have, I keep my mask on all day, so it's okay. not that big of a deal. But like, I was like, this room is too small and too 
It's COVID. You can't be farting in here. Okay. I <laughs> there don't... could be gases. I don't know. We no. It has not been proven that that is not how it's been transferred. Um, Dana, I don't want that happening here. Dana is making the claim right here. <laughs> You've heard it here first. <laughs> that there could be COVID in a fart. There could be. You could be breathing in COVID through a fart. Has anyone tested it? Fuck. Fuck. Thank you. Thank you. Damn. I think I have totally smelt up a whole ass COVID. <laughs> what? It could happen. It could happen. Oh, my God. Then what? Nobody's known this whole time. That's been why. It keeps spreading and spreading. Right. Through farts. Through farts. I rented a car that smelled straight up like farts. Like like the seats had been I would farted not up take so it. much. I would not take it. I would be so mad about that. Fuck. That's annoying. I drive the county vehicles and they always smell like Why? <laughs> they always sm- they smell like farts. They That's always weird. smell. Fucking. So did she didn't fart. She didn't fart as loud that I'm aware of. Yeah. Right. I didn't hear it. I didn't smell it, which I, you, you know what? That's all I care about. God, that's all everybody and cares really, about. Really. I mostly only care about the smell. I mean, I guess if I heard you. The smell, the sound is a fucking fence. Especially if like, let me just tell you, the worst thing you can do is if you have an argument with your wife, your significant other, girlfriend, whatever the hell it is, yeah. and you fart during an argument, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> You're like, aren't you taking this seriously? <laughs> is it your ass taking this seriously? <laughs> Clearly no. <laughs> How rude. Mm. <laughs> I can't stand y'all. Okay. That rice, jasmine rice, uh-huh. fucking chicken, garlic. Mm-hmm. Carrots, shredded carrots. Shredded carrots. What kind of flavoring is it? Like, what is the... It's just a mixture of spices that the recipe told me to put in. Perfect. Glad. It it's sounds very like informative. Very Love earthy. It. Sounds fucking secret. <laughs> sounds like a secret <laughs> recipe. Check the show notes because the recipe will be there because Cindy's not telling me. Yo, <laughs> it's... Cumin is coriander. It's paprika. It's mm. a little bit of that, Wait, you know. Russians simple. know about cumin? Apparently so. Well, let me just tell you that this tasted ethnic. It was good, yeah. Fucking it was good as taste hell. Ethnic, yeah. It was rich in flavors. Cindy doesn't add a lot of salt to her foods, which I thankfully love. I added salt, but you it, added salt. It and listen, I added, it, but it was good. Yeah, I added salt because I keep it very light on the salt, but I like to add the flavor. So the depends flavor on the person who needs the salt. Was there the, the flavor, flavor was, there. was there? Absolutely, and the smells and mm-hmm. the dark meat. Oh my god, yes, that please. shit was so good. Now, what is this drink called? Uh, this is a Moscow Mule. Really. Whoa. I now it's so good. It's very gingery. So good. Is there ginger in it? It's a ginger beer. <gasps> okay, all right. It's Love a ginger it. beer. When I our never had a Moscow Mule, our people see it online. It will be taken. The picture will be taken in the classic copper cup. Wow, do you oh. have one? I have one fancy pants that I specifically bought for today. <laughs> Wait, no. <laughs> Shush, shush, shush. We're all having copper cups. We're doing the traditional shit. This is fucking good as it's hell, so by the good. way. It's so good. I was, it took me a minute to be like, what is that flavor? What is that flavor? And I was like, it's ginger, definitely. It's, it like punches you in the face, ginger. So fucking good. Really though. fresh, like <gasps> tasting. Yes. I, what's in a Moscow mule? It tastes like you're drinking a spa, honestly. <laughs> okay. Oh I'll give you that. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you that. Sure. It's lime juice, vodka. And it's ginger beer. Always? So fucking good. That's it. Nice and simple. Always ginger beer. Always ginger beer. I love it. So the copper cup, I thought, altered the flavor. It actually does not. It just keeps the drink consistently cold. Oh. Which you would not think would be an issue in Russia at all. It's pretty fucking cold there. Like, yeah, desperately cold. Yes. Have you seen those nipples? I have. (laughs) In fact. They're always hard. (laughs) The fuck? (laughs) You can cut glass. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you wouldn't think that that would be a concern of theirs, but no. they like their vodka cold, which I appreciate. I'm mad at Russia right now. Why? You know why. Oh, sorry about it. I will say that this is not made with Russian vodka. It's made with Grey Goose instead. Um, Just because we're not buying Russian things. Because oh. we're not buying Russian things. And the liquor store that I go to is not selling any Russian products. Thank you for that liquor store that cindy goes to yeah so 
when I picked today's story, right? I've been wanting to tell you this story for a very long time. Okay. About the night witches. I appreciate that. That's fucking beautiful story, by the way. Yeah. So while this is a pro-Russian story, it's really a pro-feminism story because the war against women is happening. So I thought I'd tell some stories of some bad bitches. Yeah. So that's what's happening here today. Some men want to take over our uteruses. Yes. I think I said it earlier today, the recipes actually came from a Ukrainian blogger. The recipes come Russian from her words. Russian family. So would you say this is pro-Ukraine? Yes. You can. Always. This is a pro-Ukraine podcast. This Absolutely. is always a pro-Ukraine. <laughs> Keep fucking fighting, Ukraine. Yeah. I don't know when this comes out. I hope they win. <laughs> it seems like Ukraine is doing a really good job. That's like- They are It seems like they're really handling like it. handling their shit. Listen- Have you ever been on a schoolyard where there's a fight between a bully and a fucking underdog? Mm -hmm. And the fucking underdog takes the bully to town. Yeah. I am rooting for the fucking underdog. Of course, always. That reminds me. Sorry, never mind. It reminded me of the Eagles. (laughs) Oh, Uh, yeah. Get the fuck off the Eagles. (laughs) No one cares about that. That's why I said never mind. I had a dream. Uh oh. I had a fucking weird dream. First of all, I've had some trouble sleeping. Yeah. And, I think um, it's your age, babe. Girl, I have, like, I'll wake up and I wake up every hour on the hour. And it bothers me. That. fucking yeah. stresses me out so much. And it's because I have sleep apnea. So what I started to do was um, change my position, what I eat. Like, I've been trying everything because I don't want to go on medication and I yeah. don't want all that shit. So what I did was um, I started meditating before going to sleep. So okay. I have a VR set and um, there's this app called Trip. And it's just a meditation app. Mm-hmm. It just helps you meditate. So it feels, you feel like you're doing a DMT trip. And I've never done DMT, but like, this is what people describe. Sure, yeah. It's just like real trippy and it guides you through meditation. And it's like, like 20 minute meditation thing. And so I can't do meditation unless it's guided. Okay. Cause I don't have the patience for it. Yeah. So I've been doing meditation and I've been doing it for three days now and I have had the best sleep of my life. That's good. I feel fucking completely relaxed. I don't feel my body. I had a shoulder pain and like it was like really starting to bother me uh-huh. and cuz I've been exercising too cuz I'm trying every fucking thing yeah. so that I don't I need to sleep. Yeah. I started doing that. I didn't fucking feel my I didn't feel the pain. Amazing. It was amazing. And I've had great sleep. I'm sleeping the eight hours that I need to sleep and it was wonderful. But I'm having some really vivid dreams. Okay. So the other day I dreamt <laughs> that I had to pee really badly at an oh, airport. No. Yes, at an airport. Oh, no. And so there was a, an available stall between two stalls. Okay. And on one stall, there was a lady that had a very big butt. And my mother always used to say, I want a Kim Kardashian ass. Your mom but used my to say that? mother, no, oh. I want a Kim Kardashian ass. Like okay. I want a voluptuous ass. I yeah. am not voluptuous. The body is so bootylicious, you would say. Yes, yes. I want an onion butt that uh-huh. makes men cry. Gotcha. And I didn't have that. So you don't currently have that. No, I don't have. Okay. No, I never have. Uh huh. I've had a little butt. Mm. My butt's small. My butt's small. Mm. Yeah, my butt's small. Mm-hmm. It's not voluptuous like Hispanic women with a big butt, right. like J-Lo or anything right. like that, yeah, it's right? No, it's no, no, it's no yeah. J-Lo butt. It's a small butt. I would call it a bubble butt. Like, I had a little bit of a bubble butt. Now that bubble has been burst. <laughs> but okay. anyway, the point is, my mother always used to say, when I said I wanted a bubble butt, she says, the bigger the butt, the bigger the smell. And so <laughs> I was in a stall in the middle of <laughs> the two fuck? big butted women. <laughs> Uh huh. Right. I should have checked this dream before you told it on the podcast. So I go into the stall Uh and I'm like, fuck, the stall walls, I can see the other person in the toilet next to me on either side. Uh We can see each other. Mm -hmm. We just can't see each other's faces, but I can see their butts. It was waist high. Okay. Okay. This is weird. (laughs) So I look over and one girl is pooping and I'm like, Oh my God, she's fucking pooping. Let me not fucking look over. No eye contact. No eye contact because I can't see her face. It's waist high. The stall walls are waist high. I don't know why I had this dream. Waist high from the ground up? Yes. Okay. So like 
the toilet. worst part to yes. be able to see. So you can see their whole butt and but whatever no the function they're doing, but I can't see their face. Right. And on the other side, same thing, same situation. Mm-hmm. They're both pooping. And I was like, I really need to pee. It's urgent. If there was going to be the option, top half, bottom half. Right. That seems like the right half. Yeah, I don't want to make eye contact. We can't be making eye contact. No. We can't all be sitting here with like the stall just up to our shoulders and just like looking to the left. <laughs> yes, <laughs> not to the right. That would be tragic. Yeah. So bottom half only. Obviously. So it was bottom half only. And I'm seeing what function they're doing in the toilet. The thing you could never leave the stall until everybody's out. Clearly. I mean, I stand in the stall when it's from ground to ceiling and like wait for everybody to leave. So like. Yeah, exactly. Right. right? Especially if you're making a smelly. (laughs) Right. So the girl next, both girls are making smellies and I'm like in the middle and I'm like, I just had to pee. Yeah. So I pee and then we're having a conversation. So when I woke up, the point is that when I woke up, I was horrified And I was like, why did I have that dream? So then I start analyzing it. And I was like, what did I talk about beforehand that led to that? Yeah. Because usually when you have a dream like that, you were like, oh, I had, you know what I mean? These were were the thoughts that I had. So what was it? So at work, the bathroom that the teacher's lounge, (sighs) at the end of the day, there's always somebody that stinks it up. Made a smelly. Oh my God, made a smelly. And I, and I just, I just turn the fuck around. I'm like, nope. No. No, simply no. I'd rather piss in a fucking bottle than go to that bathroom. There's, we're not allowed to use the bathrooms in the spa. Oh, um, because of like, course not. of course, you know, people yeah. getting changed in there, whatever. So there's like these two bathrooms right outside the spa you can go to. We only have 10 minutes between services. So sometimes you just like run, go to the bathroom, come back. You know, it's real quick. Right. But there's this one bathroom that like, I don't know, all the heat goes there. Like, oh. you open the door and it's like, you get hit, punched in the face with the heat. Yes. And you're like, if God forbid someone is just in there, oh. you can't even go in there to pee because it's gonna, and then the person behind you is gonna think, and then you have to come yes. out and be like, it wasn't me. It already smelled like that. Yes. <laughs> you can't. Thank you. You're just like, I'll run all the way to the other end of the hotel yeah. before I use Simply the hot no. bathroom because it smells, it's, it's hot. It's a hot turd. Yes. Even and if it wasn't, a, even if it wasn't a smelly, it's so a hot turd in there. Even if you had to do a quick pee, you don't want to be blamed for that. You can't, right? You can't. You don't. You, you don't want to be blamed for that. So I, I'm, I go in, I do the smell, and I'm like, "Yep, you do the smell." Simply no, <laughs> and I walk away, and I go somewhere else. Yeah, but you gotta take a hike. I gotta take a hike. But at the end of the day, all the bathrooms are ripe, and you just gotta pick the less ripe one. So we got. A message from a listener slash friend slash whatever. We did. They told us about a dream they had oh, about about us. About us. Yeah. Do you want to read it? We're dream girls, but you know, yes, it's yeah. whatever. So this came through on Instagram and Cindy got it and then sent it to us. And I was like hysterical. I was like, are we inspiring people's <laughs> dreams? So this is this is how it goes. This is what they said. So last night I had a dream that the three of you owned a thrift shop with literally everything. You all, that's also my dream, by the way. Yes, of course. You also had an Airbnb attached to it in Alabama. Mm. <laughs> Keep guessing. <laughs> Well, this person doesn't even live in this country, so yeah, they're from Canada. Which, oh, Canada. Right. Which feels weird. It's not this country. Isn't that weird? It is weird. But they probably know that Alabama's. Yeah. <laughs> Questionable. I love you, Anna, about Alabama. Me, Our numbers are not great there anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> love you, Alabama. Shout out. To the one listener. I went to visit. So, okay, I'm go. I'm continuing with the dream. Mm-hmm. I went to visit Sierra and I brought my husband for whatever reason. And since we were driving there. <laughs> Why would you bring your husband? I mean, <laughs> for whatever for reason. For whatever reason. <laughs> and since we were driving there, we decided to stay at your Airbnb. <laughs> for whatever reason, the store was 24 hours. And we had and had a section that was under... <laughs> Water. This sounds chaotic <laughs> enough to be our fucking thrift shop Wait slash Airbnb. So she went to our underwater thrift shop. <laughs> our half underwater thrift shop slash Airbnb. <laughs> That's open 24 hours. 
I want to be where the people are. <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds like she was watching fantastic. The Little Mermaid. Yeah, it's fantastic. Because The Little Mermaid could have opened up. Could have had a thrift shop. A shirt, a thrift shop yeah. with all the shit that she found. Absolutely. Anyway, back to it. But it didn't feel like it was underwater. But that's usually the feeling that we go for with our thrift shop. Yeah, we want we this want, to feel as much like home as possible. Right. We, we're underwater for the location, but... We're over water for the comfort. That's right. So <laughs> it didn't feel like it was underwater. People could just walk, but you guys just had a little beta fish in bags <laughs> hanging from a hook. And I wanted to look at one to buy and accidentally let it out. And it was swimming all over the store. <laughs> I, I bought it. I bought a lot of awesome clothes, though. The whole time you guys were recording, too, <laughs> whenever someone would buy an article of clothing, it made food appear <laughs> on your pod table. It was very random and Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, who, who did this? This was Alicia. Alicia, Alicia from were, Twisted and Uncorked. Were you high? <laughs> Alicia, is Alicia always high? No, I don't think so. Maybe, I don't know. We don't know Alicia that well, but um, that shit made me laugh so hard because it kept getting weirder and weirder Honestly, and weirder. Honestly, it wasn't really that weird. Oh, I, what? I sell, I sell vintage shit online, so a thrift, star, a thrift store is not that far off. Okay. And so the food- I'm sorry, whenever you buy an article of something, food just appears on our podcast table. Well, if you think about it, our uh, patrons pay, and we purchase food. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you've sold me on the dream. <laughs> Alicia, you didn't have a dream. You didn't have a fever dream. You had a vision. You had a full fantasy. I mean. A crime diner fantasy. Listen, that's the goal. Also, I've always wanted to have an Airbnb. I'm turned on. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You're turned on. <laughs> I'm into it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Listen, the fact that she had a dream about us, that's a fucking review. It makes my whole heart. Yeah. It, that's a review. Mm -hmm. That's a review. We're making dreams happen for our listeners. That's right. It could also happen for you. We had a one star review a while back. Oh, yeah. A couple weeks ago. A fucking... It was a coward. Yeah. If... They left a one star they were, review. It was a drive by one starring. It was they so rude. They didn't even roast us. Yeah. Which we were like, simply no. And we're over here waiting on making it. Making dreams come true. I mean, a dream is a wish your heart makes. Right. Oh, so right. Don't give us the one star review. How rude. <laughs> that being said, have a reason for it at yeah, least. Tell us about right? it. So we got a lot of love. A lot of love. showed out and it was so good. I mean, they were just so happy with us. No. They I were think, ready to fight. I think my favorite one came through today. Uh-huh. That <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna just read it. Okay. I, I, I know that's your jam at the end of the episode. No, you do it. But this one came through today and it made me laugh so fucking hard. <laughs> Best time ever. You ladies are awesome and you know I love you. Forget the haters and the one star warriors. I look forward to hanging out with you every week. I'm here for all of it. All the drinking, the amazing food, the belligerence, the narcissism, and of course, the captivating stories. Love, Lisa. And I was like, <laughs> narcissism, huh? Uh-huh. They should not talk about Cindy that way. I mean, Cindy is the kindest person. Cindy's actually really nice, you guys. You wouldn't know it by how rude she is on this podcast. I mean. But the shit she says to she's really kind to us. She can be a little narcissistic, but she's sweet. I mean, she's we know really her. She's sweet. I know you guys don't know her, and she comes off really rough around Narcissistic, the edges, yes. But but she's great. You guys would love her if you got to know her in person. You I just got to know her. definitely an abusive relationship with y'all. <laughs> We're just straight giggling. Can we have dessert? Yes, please. Yeah. Let's get dessert. This is what? This is beautiful. That is Oh my it, God. Smells it smells so good. It smells like buttercream. It smells cakey as fuck. Hell yeah. What is it? So it is a Russian sour cream cake. Same same blo food blogger, uh -huh. Aliana's uh cooking. And it's called Smetanic. Mm. 
Smetanic. Yeah. Smetanic. Yes. It smells so good. It smells satanic. <laughs> satanic? <laughs> I don't know. Dude, this smells sinful. It's, it's, oh my God. So what is on the outside of it? It's actually the crumbles from the trimmings from the edging. Of course it Shit. is. <laughs> it's fucking cake iced cake. That's what it is. It's cake iced cake. It's fucking cake iced with cake. I That's mean, what's happening right now. Pretty it's much. Like, and a sour and it cream looks good. icing? It's a sour cream icing. What the fuck? And there's sour cream in the cake mix to make it. Oh my it. God. The, uh, oh, when, fuck. when I was doing the recipe and she said dilute the sour cream and I'm like, dilute? With baking soda, and I added the baking soda to the sour cream, and then it started to like science experiment. Yes, oh it totally God. became liquid, and I was oh like, "Wow, hold on, can you tell we're drunk?" <laughs> no, I'm fascinated by this. This is so exciting. I've never had a sour. I mean, I've had like sour cream, like uh, there's like a southern cake yeah. that you put sour yeah. cream in it, and yeah, that's good and fine. But I've never had sour cream in the icing. I've never had like, you know. Yeah, there's, there's some shit happening here. This feels Russian as fuck. I want to. I can't punch wait to get into something. it. And there's and it's <laughs> different. <laughs> can that sounds can we, appropriate. Can we stop talking about it and fucking be Let's about, be about it? it? Fuck. Let's be about it. What is this cake called? Never mind. <laughs> this no, was- <laughs> she had a name for it. What is it? It, it's a sour cream cake. Sour cream cake. She don't Keep remember. It, simple. it was like Smeta- a Satan. Smetonic. Smetonic. Yes. Something tonic. It's top five desserts on this oh podcast. Oh my God. Top five. Cake iced cake. Top three for me. So good. Oh, fucking so really, good. Really, really. It sort of reminded me of carrot cake. Yeah, a little. It in had the this, icing. Like, yeah, ice, the icing, but it wasn't cream cheese icing. But it, it had like cream cheese. It was. Oh, did it? it was a cream it does, cheese. Yeah. Oh, it's cream cheese, cheese and, and sour, sour cream. cream. What the fuck? That's a creamy cake. I was here for I it. I loved that it. It was so mm. goddamn good. It had a layer of vanilla cake and mm-hmm. a layer of chocolate cake. You cannot go wrong. It had two layers of and vanilla then, and two layers of yes. chocolate. And then in between those layers, it was like a sour cream icing kind of. Sweetness. Oh my! It, but it was like, it wasn't too sweet. It was just the right amount. Of I sweet. loved it. Fucking so good. And then the uh, like on the outer icing thing was like crumbly crumbles cake. of it. Oh my god! Crumbly cake. I, just treat yourself. Okay. And this might become a Moscow Mule podcast. Uh, this is definitely becoming a Moscow. I love this Mule podcast. This is the best. One of the top 10 best drinks that we have ever had on this podcast. I am too drunk to drive at this point. It is refreshing. Fucking so refreshing. It's tasty. It's Fucking flavorful. So, tr- so tasty. So flavorful. I really like it. Is there mint in there? I I added the mint mostly because I wanted it for the... Just judging it up? Just judging it Just judging it up. Pew, pew, pew. It was, <laughs> it was amazing. Not part of the recipe. I just added it for flavor. freshen up. Oh, oh, my God. Thank you It's for almost that. like you, like, know what you're doing or something. I'm so drunk. Well, can you get it together for a story? What do you think? all about the occult. We're talking different lores and mythology. Yes, creature features, cryptids, aliens, you name it, we'll cover it. Conspiracy theories. Absolutely. And pagan holidays and 100%. Practices. All eight of them. Yes. Spiritual living, you yeah. name it. That's right. We've got it for you. So if you want, come sit with us for a spell and let us make you laugh. We are Witches Talking Tarot. Thanks, everybody. Okay, so I have a lot of sources today. I uh, love it. History.com, rightmuseum.org, thisdayinvasion.com, warhistoryonline.com, tons of Wikipedia articles, uh, worldwar2database.com. Okay. Lots of, lots of, lots of 
sources today? All of these sources can and will be found in the show notes should you want to research a little further. The recipes and the drinks are there. All of our information is in the show notes. I was going to reiterate that because a lot of people are always asking about the recipes. Right. And yeah, they're in the make show notes. Make this cake, y'all. It's so good. Fucking please make this cake. The other thing I will tell you is while I have a lot of sources and this is, I'm going to tell you a lot of information. I listened to a podcast. It was an isolated podcast called The Night Witches. Oh. It was like an eight part podcast and it followed different women throughout World War II. And it was so good. And each episode was only like 30 minutes. You should listen to it. It was really, really, really well done. Really, really, really good. It was called The Night Witches. Anytime you say Night Witches, I'm fucking here for it. I'm so glad. It could be a Night Witch podcast, a Night Witch book, a Night Witch fucking pajama set. (laughs) You tell me what Night Witch to listen to. Yeah. I'm here for it. So I'm going to tell you about a group of badass Russian women who scared the shit out of Nazi soldiers. (laughs) I fucking live. So badly. Oh my God. That if a Nazi were to kill one of these women, they were automatically awarded the Iron Cross, which is like one of the highest Nazi I want to be a night witch. You're going to love this story. Oh my God. I've been wanting to tell you this for so long. Oh. I'm here for it. I'm listening. I'm on pins and needles. Good. So we're going to talk about the Night Witches. Now, before I tell you how fucking awesome they are, let me tell you how we got to the point where we needed a whole female regimen to help defeat the Nazis. Well, you know what? If daddy can't fucking fix it, Mm. bring the mamas in. That's right. Picture it. I'm picturing Communist Russia, 1930s. Still communist. (laughs) Yeah. But go on. (laughs) Good old Joey Stalin. He's -hmm. the leader of Russia. He's drinking his days away, bopping around, killing and banishing aristocrats or any regular old person. Whoever that crosses his may, path. Yes, exactly. Oppose him or challenge him in any way. I don't know what you know about Stalin, but he's not a really good dude. No, he's really not. It is estimated that under his regime, something like 20 million of his own people died either because he killed them directly or they died of conditions under his rule. Famine, forced resettlement, or labor camps. Wait a minute. What was that number again? 20 million. He was a busy boy. Yeah. This was like before World War II. What the like fuck? before and after. Like, but but many, many, many Russians were killed under Stalin before World War II even popped off. Ugh. I mean, millions of people. That's a lot. Yeah. Of, that's a lot of people. Yeah. I know numbers. It's a lot. Millions? 20 million. Millions yeah. come after thousands. That's a story for another day. Jesus. I'm telling you this because it's important to know that many, many, many able-bodied men were killed before Germany ever tried to invade Russia. Right. Now, let's talk about the invasion of Russia for a second. As some of you may know, Germany was on a literal war path, overpowering every damn country in Europe. Yeah. Certainly trying to. Yeah. Stalin was like, listen here, Hitler. It's 1939. Yeah. We ain't in no place to be having a war with you. No. We could win if we wanted to. But If we wanted to. I'm a little busy killing my own people and shit, starving them to death. I mean. Maybe in the 40s I'll be a little more prepared. But right now, not so much. And Hitler's like, yeah, yeah, of course, Joey, no big deal. Right. I wasn't planning on fucking with you anyway. No. Let's sign this little peace treaty, a non-aggression pact, if you will. If you will. And it says that I won't attack you, and you won't get all up in my business when I'm attacking other people. Don't get up in the face. And Joey Joe was like, cool, sounds good. Cool, cool. I don't give a shit what you're doing in Europe. Do you? But Hitler had his fingers crossed behind his back. (laughs) He fucking did. I saw it. Now, you may remember a few months back on an episode called Access Denied... Access denied. That I told you a story about Christina Starbeck, a Polish woman who was a secret agent for the Brits. Yes, you did. And she was a badass. She was. And she got information and gave it to Winston Churchill that Germany was going to attack Russia. And Churchill himself told Stalin, watch your back, bro. Yeah. Germany's coming for you. And Stalin was like, nah, not my boy Hitler. Yeah. We got a non-aggression pact, bro. Had his fingers crossed. Meanwhile, 3.6 million Germans tiptoed like Pink Panther style Uh over to the Russian border while Stalin was slacking. 
Uh, I okay. mean. On June 22nd, 1941, in what is considered the most powerful invasion force in history, oh, shit. Germany attacks Russia. <gasps> they get up to the border and all the Germans see that a shit ton of planes are just like lying there, chilling in the sunshine. And Germany's like, bet. <laughs> in less than one day, in less than nine hours, <gasps> Germany destroys over 1,200 Russian planes. What the fuck? In less than two months, Russia loses over 700,000 soldiers, half of their fighter planes, a fifth of their tanks, and four-fifths of their long guns. Germany just decimates parts of Russia. Not the long guns? Yes. So Almost all of them. Now they're left with short guns? Yes. Pistols. Fuck. <laughs> Pew, pew. So <laughs> I won't go into a blow by blow of the invasion and the subsequent war. Right. We all know how, you know, the subsequent war happened. We know how it went. We all know how it turns out. Right. But German soldiers were fucking ruthless. And for six about six months, they murdered Russian families. They burned villages to the ground. They captured and starved civilian prisoners. Some of them resorting to cannibalism just to survive. Oh, Kids were know, in the street just like trying to find rats to eat. It was fucked up. I love a good cannibalism story, but not when it comes to war. And no, stuff. it's no. it's bad. I say all of this to you for two reasons. I want you to understand that the main reason Russia was not immediately conquered by Germany, like many of the smaller countries like Poland and France and whatever, because of the sheer number of bodies that – the Russian army could throw at the war. Like, I mean, they had so many citizens and still do. Right. Like, you and know, ready and willing men to go want fight. Want to fight, yeah. Yes. The other thing that I want you to understand is that many of the women that I'm going to tell you about in this episode watch their loved ones get killed by Germans. Right. Watch their homes be destroyed. They were raped by German soldiers. It was brutal and they were fucking pissed. And they had nothing to lose. They had nothing to lose. Fuck it. I'm here for it. Now... Not only were these women needed by their country, but they wanted to fight. Let me tell you how Russia was kind of cool. How were they cool? <laughs> they were all about women having equal rights. Listen, I'm here for that. Sort of. But Oh, okay, not sort of. When I say that, women were able to do a lot of things that men could do. And one of those things was learn to fly. Well, let just for the for the Women can do anything that men can do. Yeah, but they won't, they're they not always allowed to. They're not always allowed to, but they can do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you first about Marina Roskova. She was born March 28th in 1912. And it was not always Marina's dream to fly planes. She wanted to be an opera singer like her father. When she was seven years old, her father died from injuries sustained from being hit by a motorcycle. A motorcycle? Yeah. It's a little like motorcycle. Got it. She continued her drama and singing studies, but later she fell victim to a middle inner ear infection. It left her unable to like sing properly. I guess she couldn't like pitch notes or whatever. I don't know about singing, oh, wow. but like, you know, it fucks up right, her, yeah. whatever. So she decided to quit music and devote her studies to chemistry and engineering in school. After graduation in 1929, she started to work at a dye factory as a chemist. She met a man there, an engineer named Sergei Roskov, and she married him. Together, they had one daughter named Tanya in 1930. The following year, she started in the Aero Navigation Laboratory of the Air Force Academy as a draftswoman. In 1933, Marina Roskova, so her la his last name was Roskov, and she added the A. I don't know how it works in Russia, but that's what, so her name is Marina Roskova. Right. She joined the Soviet Military Air Forces. In 1934, she became the first Soviet woman to qualify as an aviation navigator after graduating from Leningrad Air Force Scientific Research Institute. That's a mouthful. Yeah. That same year, Marina also trained to become a pilot at the Moscow Air Club and became the first female pilot instructor at the Air Academy. Throughout the 1930s, Marina Roskova became a superstar in the Soviet Union, often being referred to as the Russian Amelia Earhart. I love that for yes. her. Yes. During the 1930s, Marina set a number of long-distance records. Right. So this is exactly what Amelia Earhart did. Wait, so she was a contemporary of Amelia Earhart? Absolutely, I yeah. Her most famous pre-war achievement happened September 24th and 25th of 1938. Marina was the navigator of an all-female crew 
And together, they set an international distance record of 4,010 miles or 6,450 kilometers. I love that. The world record was for distance in a straight line without landing when they flew a twin engine plane named Rodina. (sighs) The duration of the flight was 26 hours and 29 minutes. And if you remember the episode a few weeks ago called Uh Flight or Flight. I love that episode. I told you the planes back then were not so comfortable contraptions to travel in, right? They're very loud. They're very cold. It was so cold that oil froze in parts of the plane. (gasps) And since all the compartments were separated, like the pilot to the navigator and the mechanics, whatever – they had to communicate with handwritten notes through, like, slats in the... Because it was so loud. So loud, they right. couldn't hear each other. The plane flight was from Moscow to Komsomlosk, Namor. They were freaking crossing the Siberian the forest. The whole Siberian yes. thing, yeah. yeah. With about an hour left of their flight, the women lost use of the radio. Because of this and adverse weather conditions, they missed the airfield at their landing site. They couldn't maintain altitude, so they started throwing things from the plane to lighten the load. What? The navigator's cockpit where Marina was sitting, there was no entrance to the rest of the plane. Like, she would have to get in before, like, the the flight took off. Right. This made her very unprotected if the plane were to crash. So the pilot ordered her to jump from the plane so that she wouldn't be killed because they were going to have to crash land. I'm sorry. So the the pilot had to save herself, whereas everybody else. No, the pilot perished? told Marina to jump from the plane. Marina, who is the navigator. Like, oh, okay, okay. So the pilot tells Marina to jump from the plane. So she does. She throws a parachute on her back. She grabs a few essentials and she right. fucking beats feet from this plane. Just shoop right out. And so everybody else dies. The other two women crash land the plane. Right. And they wait by the plane for ten days. For um, Marina to track through the Siberian fucking forest. Yeah, no. With almost no food and water. And no buses. I mean, there's like, she. it's literally like frozen swamp it's land. It's nowhere. Yeah. She finds the two women standing on the side of the plane. And all three women emerge from the forest and were given the Hero of the Soviet Union Award, which is of like one of the course, highest awards. Yeah. A fucking course. Marina, for her efforts from this... Yes. Whatever she becomes like so f- she's she's the um, she's the Soviet Union's Amelia Earhart. I'm like, still celebrating her. They fucking her. love her. The little girls like they just little girls all over Russia look up to her just like we did to Amelia Earhart. Like she's a, a true fucking hero. Barbie wants to be her. Truly, that's amazing. The th- by the way, yeah. Um, I'm not even like yeah. saying to she literally jumped from the plane with like matches, In a compass, and like Siberia. chocolate or something. Yeah, literally over like f- the frozen fucking tundra. Right. For 10 days. Like, and finds her I, And finds her friends people. because she, before she jumped out of the plane, she knew where they were going to land because she was a, she was a world-class navigator. She fucking found her coworkers. So she I like, can't find a meeting. <laughs> True. I literally have lived in this town since I was born and <sighs> I've worked in the town that I've worked in for 13 years and I drove up a wrong way on a one way today. I okay, mean, in a town us. I've worked in in thirteen fucking years. We're okay. not getting medals. Certainly no. No. <laughs> <laughs> so the three women: Marina Raskova, Polina Asipenko, and Valentina Grizobova. Fucking supermodel. They were all, the first three women ever to receive. The hero of the Soviet Union award ever, and they're over five foot eight. They're Victoria's Secret supermodels. Some of them are, yeah. Some of them are. By the start of World War II, Marina was arguably one of the most famous women in the Soviet Union. She began receiving letters from all over the Soviet Union from women who wanted to join the war effort. Hell yeah! Just like bags and bags of letters, you know, women that were fucking done with their men. Or their men were dying, their brothers were dying, their yeah. fathers were dying. Like, yeah. everybody, you know, and that kind of stuff was happening here. Maybe not right at the same time because America didn't get involved quite as no. soon as Russia right. did, I don't think. But They were like, let me get my hands dirty. Yeah, these women were pissed. They wanted to help. They wanted to kill Nazis. Uh, their, their towns had been burned to the women ground. Women always want to kill. Yeah. <laughs> so Stalin initially said the war would never get as bad as to need to require women to fight with men. But with the amount of deaths that had happened before the war started, as well as the German attack, right. women are the answer. And when women get involved, the fucking they end The tide up. turns, yeah. <laughs> no, let's I mean, not. Let's, shit gets done. Yeah, that's right. Let's not get it twisted. While Stalin did need these women, he also believed that 
the women's tremendous international propaganda value. Wait, was, propaganda? Yeah. So he was like, it'll look good if we let these women fight. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like, look how good our women are. They're right. so good. Yeah. Uh, that was a terrible Russian accent. <laughs> <laughs> So in October 1941, after much argument from Marina, okay, so Marina becomes very famous, right? She be- rightfully she, so. She gets a a fucking pipeline to Stalin. Got he it. loves her. He thinks yeah. she, he's like you're the fucking you're the Soviet Union of Mary Earhart. Like yeah, I love it. You're right. so cool. So she gets like a direct pipeline to Stalin, and she goes to Stalin. And she's like, bro, let them fight. They want to fight. That's what she said. She said, bro. She did. She bro. She's on the bro basis. Yeah, she's like, we want to fight, let us right. fight. And initially sounds like, girl, chill. And she's like, I'm telling you, it's a good idea. Yes. It took only a month, and Stalin was like, fine. You can start a regimen. And in October 1941, Stalin orders the 122nd Compost Air Group, an all-female aviation regiment with Marina Ruskova in charge. And they sent... A lot of pads and tampons. They sent fucking none. Truly. (laughs) Just wait until you hear what happened to these women. (gasps) Marina took to Radio Moscow. She rallied a call to action. And thousands upon thousands upon thousands of women wrote in saying that they wanted to fight. Hell yeah. These three regiments consisted of three different squadrons, starting with 10 aircrafts each. All the mechanics, all the engineers, all the supporting personnel would be women. Everybody. I fucking love that. Yeah. In total, about a thousand women, ages seventeen to twenty-seven. That's just the right age. Fucking babies. Fucking angry. (laughs) We're selected. About a thousand women. Love it. The three regiments were five eighty-six fighter regiments. So that's like the fighter pilots that you see, like Snoopy, like fucking yes. Yes. The. 587. <laughs> yeah, I love the, that. With the like red scarf, that whole Fucking thing. yes. The 587 daytime bombers. So okay. that's the planes where they're dropping bombs. Yes. And the 588 night bombers. Oh. The night witches. Oh, fuck yes. Ideally, soldiers were trained uh, for about two years. That seems like a long time. That's a long time. Yeah. These women were trained not just how to fly, but how to navigate, how to maintain the aircraft. They had to be the mechanic. Well-rounded. All in six months. Ooh, that's a short time. Before they ever got to war, they experienced a devastating blow. Oh, shit. During a drill, three planes went up, headed by a skilled pilot uh, named Nadzia Popova, who we'll talk about her soon, but she already had been flying planes since she was like 14 or 15 years old. She was training some other pilots. Two of the planes she was instructing got disoriented in the snow, and they couldn't tell the difference between the sky and the ground. They thought they were pulling up, but they had been facing the <gasps> ground, and they smashed into the ground. Oh, shit. And four of the women were killed before they ever even saw war. <gasps> you know, combat. Right. Nadia, Marina, and the rest of the women took this very badly and it was sobering for everybody they were like holy shit like right we could die like i don't think like yeah. maybe they realized like how serious what they were about to yeah. step foot into was you know because the soviet air force had up to this point only had men there were no uniforms that fit the women oh shit they were given old men's uniforms <gasps> which were always almost always too large the women would tear up bedding, old clothes, and stuff them into the boots to help them fit better. Oh, wow. There was, like, a story on one of the podcasts where the women were lined up and they were, they were like, saluting, like, a, a general or something. Right. And they all went to, like, about face, but the, all the women turned in their shoes, but their shoes stayed forward because <laughs> the shoes were, like, so big. It was, like, a fucking joke. You know what I mean? Aww. It was really sad because they, like, really wanted to, yes. like, you know, do the best they could. Right. And isn't that what you want? A willing soldier? That like wants to fight and do the best they can. Absolutely. Come on. There weren't any modern planes. So they were, these women were given out of date biplanes that were primarily used as crop duster training planes. Right. A pilot would sit up front and the navigator, who also would be the person, the bombardier, the person that let go of the bombs, would sit in the rear. The the planes were fucking death traps. Uh, Most of the women called them coffins with wings. Oh my God. The planes were made of plywood and canvas stretched over it. Stop. Yeah. If a tracer bullet struck the plane, it would burst into flames. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah, If you're fucking made out of wood. Literally, like plywood and canvas. (gasps) Like you can picture like, it's truly like what we see of like Snoopy or like, you know, that's exactly what it was like. That makes me lose faith in airplanes. It was bad. I it thought, was like, so at bad. At least metal. 
I mean, the men got metal planes. Oh, fuck the men. Yeah. And their metal planes. So the plane's top speed was only about 90 miles per hour. And it could only carry two bombs, one under each wing. Mm-hmm. The weight of the bombs and the crew would force the planes to travel very low, which made them very easily spottable to the enemy. Right. right? I don't know if that's a word, but that's what I said. Spottable? <laughs> Spottable, is that a word? I am Easily christening it as a word. spotted by. Right. No, it's spottable. <laughs> Detectable. There you go. No, it's spottable. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I have spotted on my paper. I don't know why I said spottable, but spottable that's what Spottable is a word. Because of this, the planes could only fly at night under the cover <gasps> of darkness. I love that. These women were given no parachutes. Of course not. Possibly because they flew so close to the ground. Witches don't need parachutes. True. Possibly because of the extra weight, or possibly because they had none to spare. Right. They had no radars or radios. They had to rely on maps, compasses, stopwatches, pencils, flashlights, like the stars. I'm sorry, pencils? Yes, to like figure out where the fuck they were. Oh, shit. Because they had no radars. Okay? Like these women were truly fucking winging it. They were on broomsticks. They might as well have been. Basically... In other words, they were way better than the men. Truly. Because they had to nothing. do all of Truly. that and still be better than them. And they were mm. still better than them. And the fucking Nazis were shook of them. I'm, I'm about shook. to tell you. Shook. Truly. Ooh, I love that. Shooketh. They were shook. The cockpits were open air cockpits, meaning the fucking wind and the elements yes. just hit them all in the face. We can take it. Many of the they women. They can take it. Many of the women could not reach the pedals, so they would have to add blocks and cushions in the seats just so they could fucking reach the pedals in the steering wheel and shit. I love that because I can barely reach the pedal in my car. Rain, freezing wind, temperatures 40 below, which is like not a thing that we understand here. Okay. 40 below. They would get frostbite just flying the planes. Yeah. Their, if their bare hands touched the fuselage, their flesh would come off. Like what? it was so cold. Like I don't even think I'm like describing how cold it was. Like it was fucking cold. Yo. Which was a benefit to them because they're used to being, not that they're used to being that cold, but right. like the Germans were not used to it. So like initially when Germany attacked Russia, they had the upper hand, but once it really started getting cold, right. they couldn't handle it. They that could shit. not fucking handle it while the Russians were like drinking vodka in their tents, dancing and shit. Yes. And like keeping warm. I mean, the Germans were like freezing their dicks off. And so, that's always been a thing about Russia and right. their wars where they've always benefited right. from their cold weather. No one has ever successfully overtaken Russia in the history of the world. No one has ever successfully overtaken Russia because of their winters. Except for Ukraine. Yeah, but Ukraine... Ukraine I'm betting on Ukraine. Yeah, but Ukraine is not trying to get into Russia. I'm saying no one... No, yes, yes. Ukraine is defending itself from Russia, but no one has ever come into Russia and overtaken them. You know, Napoleon tried and lost in the winter. Germany, you know, Nazis tried and lost in the winter. No one's ever successfully attacked Russia and won. Right. Wow. So anyway, it's fucking freezing. The one thing the women did have was a pistol. If they were to crash and uh-huh. they would need it to defend themselves, they were able to. They would always save one bullet for themselves because they would not be taken prisoner. Wow. Crappy planes did have some advantages, though. Okay. Okay. The lightweight planes made it more maneuverable than the German planes. They were able to turn really easily. Right. And it made it much harder for Germans to chase them and shoot them down. Okay. Because the Germans were good at that. They were like chasing right. people, shooting them down and shit. Being made of wooden canvas, the planes didn't show up on German radars or infrared detectors. Of course not. Since the plane's top speed was slower than the stall speed of the German fighter planes, they couldn't really chase them around. They might as well have been on paper planes. They, they truly, fucking truly. The biplanes could also take off and land almost anywhere. So they could like be in a field, take right. off, just go. That quality was super helpful because the 588 had to operate very close to enemy lines. They were constantly moving operations during the day so that the women could fight at night. So they were like moving all around, whatever. Right. Okay. Because of their combat schedule, the women slept and trained during the day and flew at night. They didn't get a lot of sleep, but guess what? What? Neither did the Germans. Oh, yes. The units nearby would prepare for the nighttime raids. The psychological effect of the night witch raids took a toll on the Germans. Yeah. Okay. Because their planes could only carry two bombs, 
Uh huh. The night witches flew multiple bombing sorties from eight to eighteen in a single night. A sortie is a mission. That's what they call their missions. Oh shit! Okay. They would fly eight to eighteen in one night. Who? Okay. Shit. So I'm going to explain to you what they would do. They drop. <sighs> okay. We don't hear enough about this shit. I'm sorry. It's so fucking cool fucking too because cool. it's it's so cool. They would drop two bombs. They would they would leave their base. They would fly out. Drop two bombs. Turn around, refuel, take two more bombs, and fly off and do it again over and over and over. And I'm going to get- 18 ins- times. Yeah, between 8 and 18 times a night. What? And they would just do this shit all fucking night long while the Germans are trying to- Yeah. They can't sleep because they're constantly being bombed. But I'm going to get into a little bit more detail about that in a second. Shit. Each sortie lasted 30 to 50 minutes. And sometimes the women would return with their planes fucking riddled with bullets. Shit. Yes, bitch. I'd be down for that. I'm sorry. (laughs) Nadia Popova, one of the most famous- Nadia. Yeah. Fuck. One of the most famous night witches once returned- from a sortie with 42 bullet holes in her plane as well as in her helmet <gasps> and her map like they just what? were fucking attacking her yes we're, we're gonna get in we're gonna talk about her a little bit another pilot lost the entire bottom of her plane from enemy fire and just kept fucking flying and like these kept, women didn't give a shit they, they were kept they were fighting the thing. yes fuck i love yeah. them fan club right here for real Each mission was extremely dangerous because the Germans surrounded what they thought would be like likely targets with searchlights and flak guns Mm -hmm. that the women would have to fly through (gasps) to reach their targets. So this is what they would do. They outsmarted the Germans. They would fly in groups of three, three planes. Uh Okay. When they neared their target, two planes would fly through the circles, like veering off between the the spotlights. I wish you could see Dana's hands. (laughs) Uh-huh. The third plane would cut their engine. Right. And just glide in silently. Ooh, like a kite. Like, like a like witch a on a broom. Witch. And Fuck. that's where they got their name <gasps> because it was this faint whooshing sound of just the fabric just gliding. Right. Fuck. I and forgot the, that they were wood and fabric. Yes. And the Germans didn't know where they were coming from. There's no lights, there's nothing. They can't see them. Fucking so the love two it. other planes are just flying around. They're shooting at them. Right. And the other plane just glides in at fucking. I'm going to tell you, like 1,800 feet and just fucking drops bombs on them. Yes. The women would then restart the fucking engine Uh and take back off. Sometimes the engine wouldn't start. The navigator would have to climb out on the motherfucking wing. What? Start the fucking engine and fly off before the plane hit the fucking ground. What? Bitch. (laughs) And then that plane would take off into the spotlight and one of the other planes would turn around, turn their engine off. (gasps) And then go in and, and drop then their. Keep doing and it. And then the third plane would do the same thing. And then what all three the planes fuck? would go back. They would load up with two more bombs each and go out on another fucking mission. All bro. night long, bro. I all am fucking night long. Fangirling here for real. Wow, they were fucking them up. Yo, they <laughs> would fly from four thousand feet. They would drop down to eighteen hundred <gasps> because if they dropped any lower than eighteen hundred, right. the bomb shrapnel could come up and hit right, them. Yeah, so they had to maintain with no engine. Right. And just fucking glide. With no engine, no radar, no, no, with fucking map and a pencil, like, that feels about like 1,800 feet. Yeah. And then start the, if the engine didn't start, pop out onto the wing. That's right. Lawnmower that shit. Pull the fucking lawnmower crank. That's right. And start the plane engine and fly back up. And then do that 18 more times. Our tits. Totally crazy. Our tits don't stop us from doing anything. (laughs) Give us Um, a chance. The navigator would be the one that would drop the bomb, you know. Uh, I'm I'm just like saying all this shit. (laughs) Like reading my paper. I am here for all of this that you are speaking out of your mouth. I'm so excited by you. I have no idea. Amazing. All the women on the ground crew would repair the damages. They would refuel the plane. They would load more bombs. And I'm telling you, when I'm saying they're loading more bombs by hand, these women are picking up of course hundreds of pounds, of course loading them on the plane by themselves there's Absolutely. no men no i i want a night witch t-shirt so bad oh my god i know i've worked with a lot of russian women in my past and i've got to say this does not surprise me about them no. not even a little bit no 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 nope aside from dropping bombs on the germans the women had another mission oh sh- on top of that yeah Golly. to disrupt the german sleep the Germans were expected to march like something like 30 miles a day. Right. So they would sleep at night. 
Not while the witches were on duty. Hell no. We ain't sleeping. You ain't sleeping, bitch. Nazis could not believe that the enemy that was giving them the most trouble was a bunch of fucking women. Like, they just couldn't fucking believe it. I love it. Obviously. I can't tell you about every single witch. Right. But I want to tell you about the few. You know, some of the most. Please do. And I'm telling if you just Google night witches and then just like go on a wiki rabbit hole. Like, I mean, there's thousands of them. They're so, their stories are so different. They're so, be- go listen to the Night Witch podcast. They only cover five witches. There's an actual podcast on this? Yes, bitch. I already told you. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, dedicated to the Night Witches? Dedicated. It's eight episodes. It's called The Night Witches. <gasps> and they just, like, follow, like, a couple of the witches. Oh, my the God. The women. I shouldn't call them witches. Right. But, yeah. But we are witches. Yeah. So, but Proud go, go and listen. True. Go listen to that podcast because right. it was so good. It was really well done. And it, it covered a lot more I love this. detail about their lives, their love lives. Love and, like, it personal shit it was really really good there's tons of books written about this it's it's so good i never heard of this yeah not, uh, youtube videos like oh my, oh my god. god truly i can't tell you about every single one of them but i will tell you about a couple of them nadia popova is probably the most well-known besides marina raskova nadia was born december 17th 1921 she grew up near coal fields in ukraine or near Ukraine. Okay. in russia when ukraine was part of russia um i think it was ukraine still I, I, you know what? Don't quote me on that. But near Ukraine, near okay. where Ukraine is now. When a small aircraft landed in her village, she became enamored with aviation, enrolling in gliding school at age 15 without telling her parents. Oh, shit. In 1937, she made her first parachute jump and her first solo flight at the age of 16. Despite her parents' opposition, she pursued her new passion and obtained her flying license. Fucking 16 years old. I love that for her. She was initially rejected as a student from a pilot school, but after Polina Asipenko, you may remember her from the flight with Marina that she crashed in the Siberian. She was on that same right, flight. Yeah. She was the pilot. She recommended Nadia for the school and she was eventually accepted. She graduated at 18 and became a flight instructor. When and- she- Instructor. Some of these girls had been flight instructors before they ever, you know, but she's 18 years old. I love this. Okay. So much. She hears the call of action over the radio right. from Marina and she wanted to fight. Her brother had recently been killed at the front lines oh, no. in 1941 and her home had been overtaken by German soldiers. I love female patriotism. She wanted in. She wanted in the war. She wanted I love to kill that Nazis. For her. her mother was devastated. She did not want her to go to war. She was sobbing on Nadia's bed as Nadia packed up her bag. Ugh. And then all of a sudden, she started laughing. And Nadia's like, why are you laughing? Her mom had looked in the suitcase and saw Nadia tried to pack her childhood doll to bring oh. with her. <laughs> and her mom's like, you can't take that to war. Oh, no. You're 18 That's years so old. Like, so her mother gave her a brooch, and she wore it for every single flight she ever went on. Did she bring her baby doll? Though? She did not bring it. No. What? Because her mom was like, "Laugh at No, her. you can't yes. bring a baby doll to war. Yes, yeah, she can though. When Nadia was nineteen years old, uh huh, she was the one who was training the girls who were killed. They crashed the plane in the very beginning of the story. Okay. She was only nineteen when she was training them, so she was devastated. Oh, she was no. really, really heartbroken yeah. over this. After training, she was sent to fight near where she grew up, near the coal fields by Ukraine. Right. And she was devastated by the destruction of her hometown. Initially, she didn't know where her family was, but she would later find out that her parents had been ev- evacuated and survived. Nadia was shot down several times in the three years she spent fighting, but was never badly wounded. On August 2nd, 1942, she was on a daytime recognizance mission. Okay. When she was attacked by Luftwaffe fighters and forced to make an emergency landing. Wait, what kind of waffles? <laughs> They're like German waffles. Okay. Trying to return to her unit, she joined this motorized column, like a, a, a throng of people that were like right. walking, I guess. And among them, she would meet her future husband, fighter pilot Simone Karlamov. As Axis forces began their retreat, her unit followed through Belarus Poland and eventually entering Germany. It was in Poland that she reached her personal record of 18 sorties in one night by herself. Or, you know, with her and her Right, her with navigator. the bombings and all that? Yeah. Okay. In a total, Nadia completed 852 missions in the war, and she was not even 23 years old by the end of the war. Oh, my God. Next, I want to tell you about Lydia Litvayek. So, Nadia and Lydia. Yeah. 
And there was Katya. Kinda and there close was to you know, my there name. was lots of yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Lydia was also known as the White Lily of Stalingrad. She was born in Moscow on August 18th, 1921. During the Great Purge, this was Stalin getting rid of a bunch of any of his opposition. Right. Her father was arrested as an enemy of the people and he disappeared. Oh, no. Lydia became interested in aviation at the age of 14. She performed her first solo flight at 15 and later graduated from military flying school. She became a flight instructor. At the time war broke out, she had already trained 45 pilots. Before a war even broke out. Male or female? Just I guess male. General. Yeah, like people right. in, the, in the flight school. After the Germans attacked the Soviet Union, she tried to join the military aviation unit, but was turned down due to lack of experience. So... Oh, but she was experienced enough to instruct. Right. Okay. But she hadn't had enough hours. Got so it. she exaggerated. She lied her on her resume. Pre wartime flight by 100 hours. Oh, and shit. she was able to join the all female 586 fighter aviation air force defense. This is the like, but that those people. She trained in Wait, a. the. the that, that's the what she, Yeah. Okay. She trained in a Yak 1 fighter with a white lily mistakenly as a rose painted on the outside of her plane so that's how she got the nickname the lily of stalingrad love that lydia lily love that uh 1942 she was assigned to the 437 fighter regiment a men's regiment fighting group over stalingrad so she joined a bunch of men like it was a co-ed okay situation happening the only girl no there was other women okay. in there yeah some of the women got to fight with the men because right. they, they were good uh, September 13th, three days after she arrives, and on her third mission covering Stalingrad, she shot down a Ju-88 bomber and an unidentified fighter, marking her first and second kills of the war, making her the first woman fighter pilot to shoot down an enemy plane. During her combat career, she scored 11 solo kills... And three shared kills. And many German pilots she shot down were shocked that they were shot down by a woman. Some of them wouldn't even believe it until they were brought in front of her and she would give them a blow by blow of how she shot them down. She'd be like, at first I did this, this, and this. And they would be like, shit, I guess she did shoot me down. Fuck. Because the, the Germans would like <laughs> thought that the Russians were fucking with them. They're like, a woman didn't shoot me down. They're like, no, 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 here she is. And she would come and be like, I did this, this, and this. Like, Fuck, she did shoot me down. So they would survive it? Sometimes, yeah. Many times, actually, yeah. And then they would be taken prisoner of war. Right, and, right, yeah. right, yeah. And then she would come along and be like, bitch, I'm the one that shot you down. What? Say something. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be like, say it with your chest. <laughs> I love that. Oh, my God. I'm fucking, I love it. She was a boss, yeah. That's my, my kind of story, Dana. <laughs> so on February 23rd, she was awarded the Order of the Red Star and made a junior lieutenant and selected as part of an elite air tactic regimen right. called the Free Hunters. They were pairs of experienced pilots which were targeted for their own initiative. So they would like go out and just fucking shoot people out of the air like on their own they're like go ahead go shoot whoever you want oh my god and she did so she like just killed mad germans like, i love that why isn't there a movie about these women? I, that i don't know like Fuck. simply Come there on, was a man. book that was very popularized and that's how they became like every now and then there's like a surge of this okay, being popular right. and there was like a book that was like historical fiction and it was about like Mary Russell. But this is real. This is very real. Yeah. Oh my God. This is very real. Why no movie about it? March 22nd, she was wounded for the first time. That day, she was flying as a part of a group of six yak fighters, and they were attacked by a dozen Germans. Lydia shot down one of the bombers, but was attacked and wounded. She managed to shoot down another plane and return to the airfield. And when she landed, she had been like shot in the leg and she was like all gray and like in the front seat because she was oh like losing God, so much blood. Right. But she was okay. She she got she survived. She survived. They patched her up and she got right back out there. She like would not be sidelined. Oh my God. While in the 73rd Regiment, she often flew as wingman to Captain Alexei Solomaton, a flying ace. Like this is like so this was a man, a male, female. She yeah, was, she would like be okay. the wingman for she this like captain. Man. Yeah. I yeah. love that. On May 21st, while training new flyers, he was killed in the in front of the entire regiment. Like he crashed the plane like right in like by accident. And that oh, happened a lot shit. when they were training because they would be training like newbies right, yeah. and they would crash. Oh no. 
Lydia was devastated by the crash, and she wrote a letter home to her mother describing how she never realized how much she loved him until he was gone. Oh, no. She was fucking crushed. Lydia scored against a difficult target on May 31st, 1943, an artillery observation balloon manned by a German officer. So it was like this giant balloon. Like, I'm like sort of picturing like hot air balloon slash okay. blimp situation. Okay. And so this like balloon would be up in the air and the Germans could get like a good lay of the land. And people had been trying to shoot it out of the air and they couldn't for whatever reason because there was all of this defense around it, the German defense. So when people would get close to try to shoot the balloon, the Germans would shoot their planes out of the air, you know? That's bizarre. Very bizarre. But Lydia volunteered to take out the balloon. She had been like, she lost everything. She lost, like, right. her friends were dying. She, you know, she had nothing to lose. She, her at man this point. had died. She was like, I can Aww. do this. And initially, they were like, girl, sit down. Our, our best people haven't been able to do it. You're not right. going to do this. And she's like, listen, I have a plan. Okay. I'm going to attack it from the rear. I'm going to fly in a wide circle around the perimeter. And I'm going to fly over the German territory. They're not going to see me. Okay. And I'm going to take the plane out. And the guy's like, you know what? Do whatever you want. Go <laughs> yeah, for it. Whatever. She fucking does it. She takes down the plane. She what? takes down the balloon. Yeah. The tactic worked. The hydrogen filled balloon caught fire under her stream of tracer bullets <gasps> and was fucking destroyed. Oh this was God. a huge deal because this balloon was getting a lot of information right. about where they're, they, where right. they were and like tactical information. June 13th, 1943, Lydia was appointed flight commander of the third aviation squadron within the 73rd guard on August 1st, 1943, she does not come back from a mission. This was after her fourth mission of the day. So she'd already been out three times. She went out. She did some right. fighting. She came back. On her fourth mission, she doesn't return. She had been escorting a flight of ground attack aircrafts, and she just doesn't come back. As they were returning to base, a pair of BF-109 fighters dove on Lydia while she was attacking a large group of German bombers. A Soviet pilot, Ivan Borensko, recalled, Lily just didn't see them. The 109's flying cover for the German bombers. A pair of them dove on her, and when she did see them, she turned to meet them. They all disappeared behind a cloud. So Ivan was also involved in the dogfight, and he saw her for the last time through a gap in the clouds. Her Yak-1 was pouring smoke and was pursued by at least eight BF-109. So eight other planes were following her, falling from the sky. Right. Like they were going after her. And she was already like... She was already on fire right. and she was falling from the sky. Shit. Ivan descended to see if he could find her. There was no parachute scene, no explosion, and she never returned from the mission. Oh, no. Since her body was never found, they had to presume that she was taken prisoner of war. Since Stalin believed that all POWs were traitors, it prevented her from ever receiving the title of Hero of Soviet Union. So, like, Stalin believed that if you were a POW, then right. you would eventually sell them out. <gasps> okay? So you would not be, like, posthumously awarded any medals because, oh fuck God. you, you're a traitor. Because right. you got caught. <gasps> In an attempt to prove that Lydia had not been taken captive, her friend, Senior Sergeant Ina Pasportnikova, Lydia's mechanic during the time she flew for the men's regiment, embarked on a 36-year search. Wait, um... Come again? For 36 years. It took her 36 years. She looked for... Not days. Nope. Not months. Mm -mm. Not weeks. She searched for... She searched around the crash site where, where she figured she must have crashed for 36 years. She was assisted by the public and the media. What um, the fuck? For three years consecutively, she was joined by relatives who together combed the most likely areas where she could have fallen right. with metal detectors. In 1979, after uncovering more than 90 other crash sites, finding 30 aircrafts. In their search, they found 90 others? They found 90 other crash sites. Holy Christ. 30 aircrafts, other lost pilots over right. the years. Searchers discovered an unidentified woman pilot who had been buried in a village locally. So somebody had found her body, found the plane, right. found her body, took a piece of the wing, took her body, and buried her. Because they knew she was a Russian soldier. Okay. They knew she died in combat. And, like, just villagers found her and right. buried her. Like, gave her, like, this right. very sweet Aww. funeral. 
You know, they just like found her. But it wasn't her. her. It was her, yeah. Oh, it was. It was her, yeah. In 1979, they found her body. It was assumed that it was Lydia because of, you know, what she was wearing and things. She had a long blonde braid. That was like her signature hair. She had this like beautiful long blonde hair. Um, And so when they found her body, her hair was still there. They assumed that she was killed in action after sustaining a mortal head wound. Oh, shit. Ina said that. A special commission was formed to inspect the body, exhume it, and it concluded that it was Lydia. Okay. On May 6th, 1990, President Gorbachev posthumously awarded her the title of Hero of Soviet Union, which is like, it's such a big deal to them. Right. Her final rank was senior lieutenant, and she was 21 (gasps) when she died. Stop! These women, none of them were, uh, the other girl was 22. Like, these women were- Oh my god, they were babies! They were babies. Like, I'm not sure, like, I'm like- expressing to you Holy the, shit. they were 19 20 21 years old they were also, younger than our kids like they I were babies i fucking love that for them yeah not the death part but no. the fucking badass yeah. yes no let's not forget the mother of the witches let's go back okay. to marina ruskova Ooh. before she ever saw any actual wartime marina attempting to lead two pe2s to a safe airfield she was forced to make a landing on the Volga Bank, which resulted in the, the death of her entire crew on January 4th, 1943. Marina Raskova was the first state funeral of the war. She died that day before she ever even got to the war. So her, she and her entire she crew? She and her entire crew were killed. They, basically, the same thing happened that happened in that training where they got disoriented because of the snow. Oh, okay. They couldn't see the... They, they Like, when it snows really bad and you're flying and you lose disorientation... Right. They can't tell where whether it's the sky or the ground, and they she was flying towards you know there's mountainous regions, right, and she yeah. thought she was higher than she was, and she crashed into the side of a mountain, and everybody in her crew died. Her ashes were buried in the Kremlin Wall beside her fellow pilot Polina Ospinkova. She was posthumously awarded the Patriotic War First Class. And she was 30 years old at the time of her death. Oh, my God. It is true that without Marina fighting to allow women to fight for Russia, we would have never had the night witches. And and Russia might not have had the success that they did. I mean, these women fought. The women got their infamous nickname from the Germans, Nachtecken, the night witches, meant to be a derogatory term. The Germans believed that the women were supernatural, that the Russians were injecting them with something that gave them superhuman strength, gave them the ability to see at night, like, what the fuck? And some of these women were pissed about the nickname because they it felt like the, it negated their actual abilities. Right. But some of the women took the title with pride, and they loved that it scared the shit out of the Nazis. They, they were loved it. injecting them with estrogen. Some of them thought they were, like, injecting them with, like, cat eye liquid I mean. and shit. Like, come on, settle down. From June 1942 to October 1945, the unit flew approximately 23,672 combat missions. Holy shit. They collectively logged 28,676 flight hours. They dropped over 3,000 tons of bombs and 26,000 incendiary shells. Wow. They damaged or destroyed 17 river crossings, nine railways, two railroad stations, 26 warehouses, 12 fuel depots, 176 armored cars, 86 prepared firing stations, and 11 searchlights. They also made 155 supply drops of food and ammunition to Soviet allies. The women knew they were badasses, and they wanted the recognition of the men they fought alongside. They often faced discrimination from male pilots. The men viewed them as inferior and showed them very little respect. The discrimination strengthened their determination to succeed. Eventually, because of their high performance, many of the men did grow to respect them, but the women worked hard to get that respect. 32 night witches died in service. 89 Soviet women won the country's highest honor, the hero of the Soviet Union, during World War II. After the Allies win the war. Okay. Right? It, everybody's thrilled, right? America, you get yes. the, the picture of the guy leaning the girl back, kissing her. It's a whole big thing, right? Rightfully so. Yeah. There were people in concentration camps. Yes. The Soviets had massive parade. Tanks, yeah. planes, people, and music, and so exciting, right? Mm-hmm. The fighter pilots are flying the planes over the parade. Guess what? What? The night witches are not invited. <gasps> no. Their planes are too slow and they're ugly. What? We don't want them part of our parade. 
What? Nobody knows about night witches for years. What and the years fuck? and years. I mean, like, so during the war, right? Like, they, some of the women, like Nadia and Lydia, things like right. that. They would they had gotten on like magazine covers and shit. Like it was very. They were very. I hope so. But like after the war was over, it was like our boys. They <gasps> did it, and like fuck yep. you, nineteen thirties and forties and fifties. Yep. <laughs> And so we just we didn't hear about the night witches for decades. Nadia, uh huh, lived till 2013. <gasps> she died at 91 years old. <laughs> yeah. Fuck she, you. She married Simon. She married her like guy that she met on the road. What? And yeah, she lived till she was 91 years old till 2013. What girl? Yeah. And that was like it was you know this story came out a bunch in 2013 because she died and it was like she oh my she was a na- the last night witch right. alive yeah she lived I some- hope she had grandkids that were like that's right that's right my grandma was my a grandma night- was a night witch <laughs> bitches beware I, I have been obsessed with this story I've been wanting to tell you about it for so long oh my god I love this story so I want to be a night witch you you should listen I kind of am <laughs> you kind of are. <laughs> <laughs> also, like, I was listening to, like, what these women were doing. So if you listen to this podcast, like, they follow five or six different women. Uh-huh. And they really explain, like, what happened and, you know. And the podcast is Night Witches? It's called The Night Witches. Oh, my God. It's like a purple little, and it's got, like, this weird little plane. And uh, so you'll know it. It's just, okay. it's literally eight episodes. And each episode's, like, a half an hour. And they follow, like, the women and... You know, they follow Nadia and Lily and, I love and a bunch of cat. There's a, there's a Katya. And, okay. You know, of course there's a Katya. <laughs> yeah. And, um, but they talk about like all different challenges that they faced and like they go into way more depth of their lives and things that oh, they were doing. Wow. But, um, many of them died. Many of them, like the one girl is like talking about how she, she, Wanted to be a night witch. She, she, of course, we didn't know they were called night witches, right? She just right. wanted to fight for the airline right, right. regimen. And, but she didn't know how to fly. Right. So she stood outside Marina's office for days, like oh. begging to be in. And she's like, I, I don't know what to do with this. She made her a mechanic and she worked her way up from a mechanic. And she was like, it's so important to be a mechanic because right. if anything goes wrong, right. I want to make sure that my, planes i send my girls out on the best plane they possibly can so it was like the the three of the women it would be the mechanic the navigator and the pilot they would be like this little crew right. for one plane you salt know they were like pepper. sisters yeah they were like salt and pepper and spinderella yes exactly and they were so like wound up for each other because like one couldn't do the job without the other. Of course, the not. navigator couldn't fly without the pilot. The pilot couldn't go fly without the nav. Neither of them right. could fly without the mechanic. And they would—they were just less. So anyway, this girl Katya, right. she wants to be a pilot. So she works her way up from a mechanic. She becomes a navigator, and she's in the plane, you know, behind the pilot. Right, right? like that's how it goes. Like the pilot's in the front, and the navigator's right. in the back, and the navigator's dropping the bombs. Right, and um. Dana's just a little kick. <laughs> because what would happen is sometimes the bombs wouldn't drop and the navigator would have to climb out on the wing and kick the fucking bomb off the wing. <laughs> you tried While they were just, kicking a bomb. Yeah, and these bombs are hundreds of pounds, you know? Right. And they would... Mind you, they're fucking gliding with no engine. They're just gliding. Right. And so... She's in the back. She kicks the bomb off. The pilot, they, you know, they restart, yeah. but the pilot doesn't go up. And she's like, what the fuck? She realizes that the pilot has been shot in the head. <gasps> she has to reach over her friend, pull Who her has body. Been shot. Who's been shot and killed. She pulls her body up and she's flying the plane from the fucking back seat. Oh, I am. Pulls her up. And then, you know, she doesn't dump her body, which she could have right. done. She, she would never do that. That's her right. girl. It's, That's, her, it's her sister. You got to look for her back. So yeah. she brings her body back so that she can be buried with I her am. family. It's so amazing oh like it's so cool i want to fucking get a night witch's tattoo i swear to you i just it's so cool like I, it just makes me be like these are the things that i wish i would have learned in fucking yes, school yes man empowering things that would have made me feel like I, I don't need to listen to this fucking 16 year old boy yeah yes i can yes. fucking be a night witch yes and these <laughs> girls were you know like the, the girls that were running it right they were they weren't even 30 years old. They were like we had to be mothers to these girls cuz they were teenagers. They were right. 17, 18, <gasps> 19 years old. They were just like <sighs> we were barely thing. mothers ourselves, yes. you know? Yes. It just, I just thought it was I like the this coolest so much. story. Yes. I love this so much. I'm so glad you told it. And I'm so glad this existed. Yeah. But it makes me sad that, like, I've heard a lot of stories about World War II. Yes. 
And ne'er a time was there a, a fucking Why am I night just witch. hearing about the Night Witches? I only heard about this like maybe a year ago. Why isn't there a movie about the I Night know. Witches? I would fucking watch that. I would definitely watch that. Yes. It's a, it's a cool story. I think you should listen to this. I, I mean, fully give them credit. Like I, I got a lot of information from the sources right. I said, but like if you want to hear about like these cool, you should, it, it, you can listen to it in an afternoon. It's just a couple hours, I you know, it's definitely really will. cool. Really, really cool. Definitely will. I love this story so much. And if you love this story and you stuck with us, that's it for us. <laughs> you did it. Great job. I mean, we'll see you next week, maybe, mm-hmm. for a second date. And in the meantime, you can subscribe so you don't miss out because we're a little bit awesome. People like us. We're likable. I mean, a hundred people like us. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so subscribe so you don't miss out. We have about 130 episodes in our repertoire. Um, also, listen, write a review. Mm -hmm. Share with a friend. Do it. Do the thing. Do your job. All right? God, you have Um, one job. I mean, you can listen to us and then follow up. Yeah. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. TikTok? Tick. I was going to say Target. TikTok. (laughs) Uh, All the socials. YouTube. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're fucking literally everywhere. We're like cockroaches. <laughs> we're on everything. <laughs> we really are like cockroaches. Um, so you can connect with us there. And in the meantime, check you out next week. And remember, do not get taken to that second location. Be good or be good at hiding a body. Goodbye. Cheers. Cheers. Are you okay? Oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> You're disgusting and I hate you both. Thank <laughs> you.